So I and my interfaith amigos, uh, that's Rabbi Ted Falcon and Pastor Don McKenzie, and we're known as the Interfaith Amigos, uh, we wrote a book called Getting to the Heart of Interfaith. In that we describe the three stages of interfaith dialogue. I'd like to talk to you about that. The first stage is, can we simply connect on a human level with the other, be it uh, with someone who is the other and who is different in religion, in politics, in culture, can we simply connect as human beings? This is this wonderful uh, insight or a saying that says the universe is not made out of atoms, it is made out of stories. Can we simply share human stories, bond as human beings? There is no uh, need to delve into uh, a heavy discussion of theology or politics, but a great need to bond, to connect as human beings. That's the first step. Second step, let's say we are bonding with someone of a different faith. The second step is can we have an appreciative understanding of the other person's religion? This was a very strong point that Mahatma Gandhi emphasized, insisted upon. He would say, if you really want peace in a multi-religious society, it is the sacred duty of every individual to have an appreciative understanding of the other person's religion. It's not enough to say, I'm open-minded, I'm non-prejudiced, because the sage will ask, what are you open-minded about? So I, as a Muslim, living in a Christian majority country, it is my sacred duty, that's step number two, to have an appreciative understanding, certainly of Christianity, maybe also Judaism, if my neighbors are Hindus and Buddhists, of those religions also. The third step is, once you have established a friendship and there is some trust, willingness to be vulnerable, then let us talk about those areas in our, in our religion, not in yours, that are awkward, that are difficult, that don't conform to our core teachings. Mahatma Gandhi hinted that every religion has truths and untruths. And if somebody got excited, uh, I'm told that he would say, I'm not saying that those verses are not divine. They're divine. But human consciousness is less than divine. And when human consciousness touches a divine verse, the understanding, the comprehension, can be less than divine. That was the third stage. Fourth stage, again, only after there is this bonding, a willingness to be vulnerable, to be able to enter into more difficult conversations. For example, I and Rabbi Ted and Pastor Don, we have gone all over America, over 200 presentations in universities and seminaries, churches. And we find many beautiful, particularly Abrahamic alliances, Jews, Christians, Muslims, doing very well until, until there is a crisis in the Middle East, a fight between, say, Israelis and Palestinians, then it only goes that far. It breaks up after that. Unless that group, in that group, people have had an abiding friendship, they have bonded as human beings, because then, in spite of those political difficulties, the conversations can continue. 
And by the way, this is a very common complaint about interfaith programs, particularly Abrahamic ones, that if they're only intermittent, infrequent, when people get together, the talk and behavior is absurdly nice. But once they go home, the Muslims become terrorists, the uh, Christians become liars, uh, the Jews become uh, occupiers, unless again that gathering has provided the environment for the people to connect and they follow up and they become friends. So that is very critical. The fifth stage is, can I be open to the beauty and wisdom of other traditions? So I as a Muslim, when I'm open to the beauty and wisdom of other traditions, this waters my Islamic roots, makes me a better Muslim, a more developed human being, which is why we say interfaith is not about conversion. Interfaith is about completion, becoming a more complete, developed human being. And if people get very scared that if I attend other houses of worship to learn, or study other traditions, this is going to dilute my connection with my own religion. But all the anecdotal evidence is that if I am rooted in my tradition, and if I then become open to the beauty and wisdom of other traditions, this enriches my connection with my own tradition. This ennobles my understanding of my own faith. That was the fifth stage. There's one more stage, and that's the sixth stage. And that is where it's called really engaging in spiritual practices. You see, I might quote to you beautiful verses from the Quran. The Quran says, if you kill one innocent life, it is as if you're killing all of humanity. You save one human life, it is as if you're saving all of humanity. Another one says, be just, be just. This is closest to being God conscious. Let me give you one more. The verse in the Quran says, be witnesses to truth, even if it means that you are testifying against yourself, your relatives, your parents, rich or poor. So you see, beautiful, timeless verses, divine revelations, which are in every single tradition. But what does it matter if I cannot practice them, if I cannot live them? So to live them, I have to do this inner work of becoming a better, more complete human being. And how do I do that? Well, one way is those spiritual practices to transform my ego, to open up my heart so I can truly embrace all the bewildering paradoxes of life, have so much more space for joy and love and passion to flow within me so that I can be of authentic service to God's creation. But all of this requires work, effort, exertion, patience, time, and it requires spiritual practices that I can do regularly. So that's the last step. May I have a few simple spiritual practices or practices to become a more complete human being. And you can decide what those practices are, but do them regularly. Thank you.